Good morning, everybody. Just checking in Zoom. Can you all hear me all right? So this is one of those days where we're trying out the television in the sanctuary because we're showing two choir videos today. We want all of the people in the sanctuary to also be able to see the videos as well as hear them. Um, as we know, technology always goes a little awry, so we're ready for anything to happen today. Zoom could disappear. They'll, we might still be able to hear them even if we can't see them. You never know. Our internet can go a little wonky on days like this. So we will give it our best shot, and the Spirit will help us through everything. So welcome to Jackson Community Church. Although Epiphany actually takes place later this week, we will honor and observe Epiphany today during our worship service. And so those who are in the sanctuary should all have a star. Does everybody have a star? Okay, great. And I'll explain later what we're going to do with those. This is for you to have something to bring home with you to think about for the year to come. And for those of you who are in Zoom, I have these pretty gold stars. And you can send by chat to me, um, just send it to everybody actually, your word, and I will put your word on a star so that your word is represented here in the sanctuary. And um, you might have to write it down for yourselves or I'll take a photo and I'll send it to you or email you your star and your word, okay? So you have your star to meditate on as well. Additionally, because we are doing communion, and again, this is a hybrid experience, if you are here in the sanctuary, you ought to have, if you, if you are participating in communion, a little tiny cup. And on the very top of it, it may not be obvious, there's a wafer. And so we're going to do bread, and then we do the cup. And so when you peel back the top, the wafer's inside. And the juice, and it's juice, it's not wine, is in the little cup inside. They're individual for everybody's safety. And if you are at home, of course, whatever elements you have at hand, your coffee cup, your tea, your hot chocolate, your water, um, whatever snack or nibbly, toasty thing you have, these become your elements of communion. What, wherever we call the blessing down, it is sacred. So those are just our little notes for preparing for today. And um, if everybody that's on Zoom wants to unmute and just at least wish everybody here happy new year and if you in the sanctuary want to shout happy new year back does somebody does have the traveling microphone available yet sue has it okay so you might just turn it on okay so you guys unmute if you're in zoom and shout out happy new year to the sanctuary they can see you happy new year happy new year, happy new year. <laughs> all right everybody in the sanctuary <laughs> shout it back happy new year <laughs> you may not be able to hear everybody, but they're all waving and shouting back at you. So there you go. <laughs> so we welcome you all here, and we always begin with any announcements before we enter a time of worship. So I just want to double check. Are there any announcements that are critical for the life of the church this week? Okay. Then we're going to begin by centering ourselves, and we're going to ask Alan to play some centering music for us. And please, you know, place your feet on the floor, relax your bodies. You can close your eyes or you can watch and just relax your hands and pre prepare to receive the gifts of this time.
Now I'm going to ask that you all join me in the call to worship. If you are here in the sanctuary, you will find that in your bulletin. If you are in Zoom, you'll find it on your screen. Source of living light, we hear the story of the Magi and tie it together with our familiar Christmas celebrations. It feels comfortable to us. Shine brightly in us and through us. Give us your vision for what you would have us be and do in the light of your love. Guide us to walk in your way as we enter the coming year. The first of our choir songs is O Come All Ye Faithful, which was prepared this year for our Christmas season. together even in song. So thanks to Billy, thanks to our choir, thanks to Alan for the music that continues to uplift our worship throughout these times. We turn now to this time when we gather in prayer. We bring to each other both our concerns and our celebrations and we say them out loud and we lift them up to the one who listens always 
We create also a moment of silence for anything that you are not able to say out loud in this gathering. And we will conclude with the Lord's Prayer. So again, we begin with any prayers of concern, and I'm going to start us in Zoom. So if there's anybody in Zoom who has a prayer of concern that you wish us to lift up together, please go ahead and unmute and share that prayer with us. I don't see any, oh, I see Jeanette. No, I don't see anything. Okay, all right. Zoom is quiet. They're not having any concerns they wanna share out loud with us. So here in the sanctuary, are there prayers of concern that you want to lift up out loud today? Uh, there's a microphone, so we would ask you to speak into the microphone and, and please leave your mask on too if you're gonna speak. Nobody has any concerns. Okay, that, and then that's, uh, that's, Sue has one, and here's one here, and then there's, go ahead. So just speak right into the microphone. Is it on, Sue? Prayers Dragon for Heather. Heather, like, with brain, with brain cancer. Bre uh, Heather is struggling for her life with brain cancer, and she's having a new round of cancer, uh, chemo, and her, her dear friend is asking for prayers for Heather. And so we hold Heather in the light, um, we pray for dignity and comfort, for a path for healing if this is possible for her, for stability and resilience, for peace and strength for those who love her and keep vigil with her through this journey. And we know that when we pray for uh, Heather, that we pray indeed for others too who are living with life-threatening forms of cancer and other conditions. We have people that are on hospice now, um, and for all those that we love who are in very challenging places with their body, their mind, their heart, and we include Heather deeply in our prayers. We lift up these souls. Other prayers of concern here in the sanctuary. Bob has one. I'd like to um, ask a prayer for Bonnie's parents. Unfortunately, I was not able to go down with them uh, over the holidays because I got a bad cold, but money went down and they've deteriorated a lot in the last six months. So for our families, um, for those who are on this human journal and really coming to its winding down time and things are changing, for, for Bunny's parents, for Meg's father, for so many of our parents who are experiencing challenges at this time, for our partners, we have people with spouses or loved ones too who are also coming to this time in their life. And for those who take care of them, for those who love them, and for the people themselves going through this journey, comfort, peace, dignity, and to know that they are held in the light. Sue? I'd like to keep in mind those that lost everything in the fires in Colorado. Yeah. What a tragedy and loss of life. Let us pray for them. Indeed, thank you for lifting that up. We have another prayer over here. No? Okay. Uh, so thank you for raising up the fires in Colorado. We think two of the people that recently had great loss of life and, and all kinds of material things due to tornadoes and other natural disasters. Um, our world is crying out in pain. And so we speak and think about not just people who need healing, but places that need healing and those who live in those places and the pain that they experience when such disasters happen when conflict happens, when all types of environmental and human-made conditions occur. Any other prayers of concern? I'm going to just add then those people for whom we pray quite regularly who are part of our community, for Scamp, for Huntley, for Sasha and her granddaughter Mary, for Richard, for Alice, for Jan and Barry, for Anne, for Arden and Ray, 
and for others that we know who are quietly also living with many different kinds of challenging conditions that range from cerebral palsy to epilepsy, Parkinson's, other forms of chronic cancer or cancer that's in treatment, diabetes. There's so many different things, Alzheimer's, that are challenging members of our community. We also lift up particularly a friend of one of the members of the eight o'clock gathering this morning named Linda, who's also living with cancer. And it was asked this morning and it bears repeating for those that have been affected by COVID and who in this room at this point doesn't know somebody who's been affected either in a, a gentle way or in a devastating way by COVID. My daughter asked for prayers for her cancer patients, but last year she was a COVID nurse and 100 of her patients died due to COVID. People are still losing their lives, are having experiences of losing jobs for a period of time or having quality of life change. Um, we continue to pray for our world, for each other, and to ask that we each do our best to honor each other's health by taking care of ourselves and others in the best way we can. We turn now to prayers of hope and healing and celebration because indeed this is the turning of the year and it is a time when we need hope and we remind each other that there is reason to hope. And so first again in Zoom, if you have something to celebrate or something you're grateful for, please share it with us. Uh, I'm uh, grateful for a phenomenal week with my niece who is visiting from South Carolina. She leaves today. Um, it was a great, great and fun time. Uh, the only bummer is that she didn't get to see any snow. So, but other than that, we're good. <laughs> it was great. Might be some climate change in there going on, but yeah. grateful for the family gathering part. Other prayers of celebration or gratitude anywhere in Zoom? It's all set. We're all set. All right. I, I do know that there are some people that are zooming in because they are with their families right now in other parts of the country. So just, I will make note that um, many of us have, if we've had the opportunity to be with our families, even if it's in difficult circumstances, the chance to connect is invaluable. And we have learned how to cherish and that we should cherish it. So we give thanks for any chance to connect. Here in the sanctuary, do we have any prayers of celebration, gratitude? Here's one from Jean. And well, then... I have one. I'm re recovering from my fall, but also I am now a great grandmother as of New Year's Eve. Uh, oh, wow. Nolan was born naturally, even though his mother had eclampsia and we had grave doubts of what was going to happen, but he's a healthy five pound baby. So Jean is the proud grand, great grandmother of a healthy five pound baby grandchild born on New Year's Eve. Wow, so that's great news. And the mom was having some challenges and mom sounds like mom's okay. And that's also incredibly important. There's, I know there's another prayer here with Jim. I, uh, Claire and I are grateful that our two daughter-in-laws and our two grandchildren have recovered from COVID and that our sons didn't get it and that Claire and I tested negative. So everything's going well. I'm, I'm very grateful for that. So prayers of gratitude for recovery from COVID. Mm -hmm. Wow. Thank you, Jim. Other prayers of celebration. I don't want to miss anybody. Well, I'll add, you know, my prayer of gratitude that my daughter and my son-in-law we're both here over Christmas, and then we went down to visit them for New Year's Eve and spent time with Nero's family um, and got a sneak peek of their very fabulous Nepali Hindu wedding attire that they're going to wear to celebrate their wedding anniversary this summer. So they, they had a lot of bling going on, and they look good. I want us also to remember those places in the world that we have formed particular partnerships. We have a partnership with the church. The 
Jakonga Church in the city of Mutare in the nation of Zimbabwe. We have long-standing relationships through Meg Phillips with particular communities in Honduras through Honduras Hope. And we know that other people in this congregation, in this community have additional connections to other parts of the world because we have family living there, working there, learning there, visiting there, living there. And so this reminds us that we as the body of Christ, as the body of holy love are knit together by deep bonds with people that we know, as well as people we may never get a chance to meet. I've never met anybody from the Chikanka Church except over WhatsApp by chatting with them or seeing their videos, but I have a relationship with them and each of us has those profound connections. And so we are reminded that when we pray, we hold up other communities, other relationships, beyond those that we can see either in Zoom or here in this room. Please pray with me. Oh, holy God, this is the time of light. We have told stories of light throughout Advent, and Epiphany was the reminder to follow the light, to seek out love, the presence of love, to come into that presence, to celebrate what it means to visit this story again and again and know that that love seeks us out as we seek it out. And we are reminded that we are indeed heirs of light, children of light, and that we hold within us your light. We ask that your light, that your love, that your presence will be with those that we have lifted up in prayer, both in joy because we have connected and sorrow and concern because people are so in need of your healing, of your love, of your comfort. We ask that you will hear now our silence and those prayers we did not say out loud. And we ask that you will hear our voices raised up together. And if you are in Zoom, please unmute and join us. You'll find the Lord's Prayer in your bulletin if you need it. Our Father, who Lord, art in heaven, in heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom, thy kingdom come, come. Thy will, thy will, be, done. will be done on earth, on on earth, earth as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day, day our daily bread. bread. And forgive us our sins, our sins forgive as we forgive those who sin against us. Against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us, deliver us, from, us from evil. For thy kingdom, kingdom, the power, the power and, and, the and the glory forever. forever. Amen. Amen. And now it's our turn to sing a Christmas carol. I think people love Christmas carols, so we sing them every chance we get. If you turn to page 141 in your pew hymnal, and please stand if you're able. We're going to sing verses three through five because we're picking songs that still have something to do with our theme of epiphany today. And if you are at home, we will have the words on the screen for you and we're doing three verses.
Raise your hand if you've ever sung those verses before. Hmm, one per two people, maybe three. Okay, so yeah, we ventured into new territory in our Christmas carols with verses that we don't usually try out. We'll give ourselves credit for courage, if nothing else. I'm going to turn us now to scripture and I'm going to ask that Lori will read it. Lori, if you want to read using the um, portable microphone, my, Sue has that. Yeah. Yes, you do, because the, the people in Zoom can't hear you unless you use it. People here can. And you want to stay a little bit, be, in, stand sort of like in the cent, one of the aisles, just so we don't get feedback if you get too close to the ones up here. All right, go for it. Good morning. Can you hear me? I'm reading from Matthew 2, 1 through 12 verses. In the time of King Herod, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. They are asking, where is this child who has been born king of the Jews? For we observed his star at its rising and have come to pay him homage. When King Herod heard this, he was frightened, and all Jerusalem with him, and calling together all the chief priests and scribes of the people, he inquired of them where the Messiah was to be born. And they told him, in Bethlehem of Judea, for so it has been written by the prophet, and you, Bethlehem in the land of Judea, and by no means least among the rulers of Judea. For from you shall come a ruler who is to shepherd my people in Israel. Then Herod secretly called for the wise men and learned from them that the exact time when the star had appeared. Then he sent them to Bethlehem saying, go and search diligently for the child. And when you have found him, bring me word so that I may also go and pay him homage. When they had heard the king, they set out, and there, ahead of them, went the star that they had seen at its rising, until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw that the star had stopped, they were overwhelmed with joy. On entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down, and they paid him homage. Then, opening their treasure chests, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and mirth. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country by another road. How many of you have heard that story before? I'm guessing most of us find it familiar. And if you're in the sanctuary, you might notice that we created a journey towards Bethlehem in the windows. So we have the text of Mary, Joseph, the birth in the stable, the shepherds followed by the wise ones as you move forward. And so all the wise ones are congregated in the, the forward windows here, either next to Alan's piano or here to the left of the organ. And that's intentional because although we sometimes put everybody together in the same nativity scene. In point of fact, people arrived at different times over the course of the season. There are stories that go beyond this story that you won't find in the Bible. They are stories that are cultural stories that have been added to this 
nativity scene, and they have been documented by early commentators. They grew up in the first few hundred years and flourished and were embellished in years to come. One of them is about what happened the first night after the family warned in a dream that Herod was angry and afraid because a child had been born that challenged his status as the king of the Jews. And he had declared that he would execute all the young children in the area. And although researchers dispute whether he actually made such a wide proclamation, it is absolutely known. One of the Roman emperors actually said this, it was better to be a pig in his kingdom than to be one of his children. He had three of his own young children executed. We know that Herod was not a good guy. We know that he had the title king of the Jews given to him by the Roman government because he was cooperating with the Roman government. And while he was in some ways a respectful Jewish person, in other ways, he was constantly at odds with those that were the cultural and the religious practitioners of what it meant to be Jewish, and that he supported other religions because he was always negotiating for power inside the Roman government. He was not really trying to create a safe place for the Jewish people to worship but the center of their worship life was in the city that he held power over. And he was very insecure in his power, of course. That would be why he would have some of his own children executed. And so if there were any other rumors of any contenders for his position or his power, he would have taken them out, even if they were children. And so the story as we have received it is that the young Jesus was under a threat of death from Herod, which is why the wise ones warned, went a different way and did not return to Herod, did not tell Herod where that infant was. But even hiding where they were in Jerusalem, where they were in Bethlehem, anywhere in that land was not safe. And so they had to flee across the border into Egypt. We know that the Jewish people left Egypt because Egypt had become not safe for them hundreds and hundreds of years before. And so it's a literary construct in a way to send the Holy Family back to the place to reclaim safety in a land that had become unsafe for the Jewish people in the deep past. On the first night of the family's flight, so it is said, Herod's soldiers were pursuing them. And they found, exhausted after their first day of travel, a cave. And they tried to go as deep into the cave as they could and make as little noise as they could, but they were traveling with an infant. They were traveling with animals. How could they not leave a trail for those that knew how to read it? And Herod's soldiers did indeed track them to the cave. But as the story goes, there was a spider in the cave. And the spider, like the creatures of God, had a purpose, had a gift, had a way of participating in this story. And the spider, perhaps communing with holy love, perhaps asked to or moved to by the Spirit of God, wove a web across the entrance into the cave so that by the time Herod's soldiers reached the entrance, there was this amazing web collecting dew in the morning sun and reflecting light off the dew, making it look as if no one had passed into the cave and there could be no one there. And based on that simple evidence that there was this spider web covering the entrance, and so clearly no one had broken through it, brushed past those delicate strands and taken apart a web, The soldiers turned away and continued to hunt for the Holy Family. 
And so it was the spinning of a small creature that on that first night saved the holy family, that they might continue their flight into Egypt and await the time that they could safely return to Israel with their son, where they would raise him to become the man that we have heard so many stories about, whose way we have chosen to follow, whose life is light itself. But it was the light of a small creature in this mythical story that saved that child's life on that first night of exile. And the question we might ask ourselves today on this turning of the year, on this final observance of the Christmas season, and the stories that we have been telling each other, reminding each other that we all have light within us, is where will you put your light to use in your own life and the lives of others in this world this year? And where do you need light in your life? Who else's light do you need to welcome into your story that one night at a time, one step in the journey at a time, you too are safe and held and protected so that you too may continue in your own journey with and towards holy love so that you too may receive love and give love in the best way that you are able to in the time you are given on this earth. We gave out stars this morning and I ask you to pull your star out now. And just as the people that gathered at 8 o'clock will do, and if you are in Zoom, this is your invitation too. What word have you heard or will you hear this morning that embodies either a gift that you want for yourself or that you celebrate because you know that it is present in your life and you want to uphold it as you meditate on what it means to move into this coming year, we ask you to take the star, which for those who are in Zoom, I gave people here in the, um, the sanctuary a more complicated star. This is a scratch art star. So underneath there are all these vivid colors. So if you scratch out the word that you are claiming, you'll find light and color underneath. And you're welcome to also color in a pattern. But certainly at least, if you don't do it right now, over the course of this morning, listen for a word. Be quiet with yourself and choose a word or a phrase that you can place on this star and perhaps hang up somewhere in your house so that it is with you to remind you in what you celebrate or what you request for a gift of light, of hope, of blessing as you enter the year to come. And if you're in chat, I've invited you to send me your words. And so one word, Sandy's word is courage. If there's anybody else that has a word that you want to share in chat, I'll be happy to put your words up. The words this morning in included potential, shine, birth, and rest. And from Kate, she's asking for wisdom. She's focusing on wisdom. Does anybody here inside the sanctuary have a word you want to share out loud with anyone? Go ahead, Lori. Joy. joy. Lori's choosing joy for her star. In some churches, they pass out stars and they already have words on them. We thought it might be nice if you got to really tune into the word that you need to claim 
today as opposed to having it assigned to you. Any other words that anyone wants to share? Peace, Sue's choosing peace. All right, I'm gonna let you guys in Zoom continue to share any words that you want me to write down through chat. And we are going to listen to the choir's song, See That Star, while all of you meditate on the gifts that you wish to claim for yourself for this year. When the universe was created, novas burst and poured out into the universe, and the elements of light poured out with them, and that elemental travel landed in our bodies. We literally are made up of the elements that are in stars, but also each one of you is a vessel filled with light, filled with potential, filled with love. The love of God, the love of holiness, the love of creation that walks in this world, it walks in your bodies because we are the servants of love. We are the bearers of light. All people, all creatures are bearers of light, and sometimes we forget it. And one of the reasons that we find each other in places like this is because we need to be reminded about what our gifts can do for each other. And that when it all seems dark and impossible, maybe someone else needs to breathe on the sparks of hope and healing in your life and reconnect you, that you know that there is indeed light within you, but you are not reliant on only your own battery, your own fuel, your own light. You are fed by holy love that pours out into this world again and again and again and accompanies you on the journey that you will take this year to rekindle the light when yours is going out.
I'm going to move down below so that we can share communion together. And I'm just going to remind everybody that is either in Zoom or here, we continue to appreciate the faithful giving which you have honored us with throughout COVID. Um, you can give online at jxncc.org if you are not here in person. But if you are able to and choose to make a contribution to this church, there are envelopes in the pew. There are plates out in front. You can drop something in the plate on your way out. We thrive and have continued to thrive during COVID because we are one of many churches in the Valley who are very active. And we are active because we are supported and because the members of this church believe that church belongs outside the walls. It belongs in the community. And so what we do is largely done outside the building in our relationships within the community. But your time and your gifts help sustain that work and we appreciate it. I turn you now towards communion. And this is an interactive liturgy for communion. It was written by Marin Tirabasi, who is a poet laureate here in New Hampshire, and also um, United Church of Christ minister. This is her liturgy for this Epiphany communion. So you'll find the liturgy in your bulletins, and I ask that you participate with me in it. And if you are in Zoom, you'll find it on the screen. This is the invitation to communion. It is extended to all people. You don't have to be baptized. You don't have to be in some per state of perfection or have confessed recently. We ask that you will come and join us in a celebration of love, no matter where you find yourself on our journey. And join me now in extending this invitation to each other. Come from your still nights and morning oases. Come with the need for peace of mind and peace on earth. Come to Bethlehem remembered, but hold in prayer the sorrows of Bethlehem today. We come for Emmanuel, God with us in journey and shelter. And I ask that you join me now in the prayer of confession, which again, you'll find either in your bulletin or you'll find on the screen. Emmanuel, all children are holy and we have failed to give them dreams of hope, paths to safety, places of shelter from fear and violence. Forgive us when we ignore children in our neighborhoods and on our news feeds who face modern Herod dangers. Lead us this new year to find Magi resources, map the journeys to possibility, and welcome all who need a safe place, for we pray in the name of any frightened child of Bethlehem. Amen. The dream came. There was enough gold for a fresh donkey. The moon shone on the desert. God gives us courage to help the most vulnerable in our world in the year to come. Thanks be to God. We remember today a child born to change everything and the endangerment of many children. And we remember that the baby named Jesus grew up to help people in their hurting and loss, traveled as many roads as we do, and taught us with simple words we can understand and stories to which we come many times to find new meaning. 
we remember that there are six miles between Bethlehem and Jerusalem and some 30 years between the Magi visit and a Passover meal when Jesus blessed a new royal gift, bread of hope and cup of love poured freely. I ask all of you to join me now in the prayer of consecration, which is we call down love onto the elements that we have placed in our homes on Zoom or in our hands here in the sanctuary. Emmanuel, God, you are with us in our lonely nights and following so distant stars. We carry all our old years and open our new one, always hoping for an oasis for each of us and a blessing on earth in the form of bread in our hands and the cup we lift. May this bread and cup be so sacred we never lose the star's shine, never ignore the new year and new chance embedded in every day, or forget Christ who calls us to sharing and joy. Amen. Brothers and sisters, please take the wafer that's in your small cup. It's underneath the little plastic, so there's going to be this little crinkling plasticky sound as everybody opens up their wafer. At home, you might have something more elegant, but we're going with our wafers here. And please say these words with me. Let us share the bread. It is the gift that reminds us of our gifts. And please take of the bread. needs help raise your hand because we'll help you all right we, we, we need help right here okay I'm gonna come help you <laughs> there you go yeah that cranky little piece of there you go so there's a little basket anybody else need help got it all right and friends, you'll find in the very little cups here in the sanctuary or in whatever vessel that holds your beverage if you're at home, the juice, the coffee, the tea, the cup of blessing that we will share together. And I ask again that you will join me in these words of consecration. Let us drink deeply so that we may always travel on. Did everybody get a chance to sip from their cup? And then I ask that you will join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. God, we give thanks that you come to us as epiphany, in bread and cup, in old story and your answer to each of our hopes, need for peace, longing for joy, commitment to love. You have filled us so we may share the good tidings all the year long. Amen. And now, I bet you knew this was coming. We three kings, woohoo! So if you want to find the red hymnal in your pew and rise if you're in the sanctuary and you are able to stand, uh, and turn to page 162, we will sing verses 1 and 5. So the first verse and the last verse of We Three Kings. 
And hopefully we'll do it in a, a lively enough that it's not a dirge. We, we want it to be a celebration, so we'll give it our best shot. to sing our benediction. For anybody that's ever been here, we sing the same benediction every single week. The words are in the bulletin, and the hymn, uh, the tune is easy to pick up. If you don't know it, listen to the people around you, and we are offering each other benediction. Brothers and sisters, go in peace, go with light and hope in your hearts and in your lives, go bearing that light for others and welcome that light into your own life this year. Go in peace.